is uh, Tuesday, the 12th of January, 2021. So this training of our minds is something that's very important for us. It's especially so nowadays. And this world has developed a lot. But alongside of that, other things have developed as well, such as illnesses, viruses. You see that this pandemic has spread all over the world. Many people are becoming ill. And huge amounts of people are dying as well. We see that the development of the world, it doesn't make our minds developed as well. And um, it's actually that in this um, state of this great external development, um, the people who don't have much wisdom in the mind, they'll become lost in the world. And this causes them a lot of difficulty and suffering. So this Dhamma that the Buddha left behind, the teachings that he left behind for us, that even though he passed into Fauna Nibbana 2,564 years ago, um, these teachings, they haven't gone out of date. They're able to solve and cure the suffering of the hearts of all people. Because the minds of the people in the Buddha's time and the minds of people now are no different. Minds of the humans that live in Thailand and those who live overseas, they're not different. They have liking and disliking, just the same when these minds receive any sense impressions. The people have anxiety, they feel love, they feel hate, they feel fear and jealousy in their hearts, just the same. So if we don't train our minds or if we haven't trained them already, and when they meet with these sense impressions, um, any senses that come in through uh, the six sense bases, then uh, the mind will proliferate continuously upon those. And this causes us a lot of pain within our minds. So even though we may have studied a lot and gained much memory, um, much knowledge that we've memorized, this isn't able to help relieve the suffering that we have. It's not able to fix these problems of our mind. But what we need to do is to practice, to train the mind so that it has a sense of inner peace to it. So the peace of the body, the peace of speech, this is to do with our sila. And it's very important to develop this initially. Uh, because it's natural that when we experience any sense impressions, then we'll think following that and we'll want to act upon it, we'll want to speak, we'll want to uh, do bodily actions, and especially if we're lacking in mindfulness. So we see that when the world is full of people who don't have virtue, who are lacking in peace of their body and speech, then the world becomes a very chaotic place. And as people living together in groups, we need rules, we need regulations, um, so that we're able to live together peacefully. We need boundaries. But for those people who have barami, they've got a lot of merit to them, then they'll be able to set their own boundaries uh, through sila, dhamma. And when we have peace of our speech and of our body, then this is true peace. But whatever the case, we do need to train, we need to practice. Um, and those who see the danger in a chaotic mind will make the effort to do this. And we can ask ourselves, when things outside of us are all stirred up, why does our mind beca become stirred up as well? We don't want for it to think so much. We don't want for it to be so chaotic, so scattered. So why is it like that? And then the answer um, appears that 
it's because we're not able to control our minds. So we may ask, well, is there a path that will allow us to control them? And uh, the Buddha taught this path. So we need this uh, sila dhamma, this moral integrity. Um, And we also need samadhi and wisdom as well. And even though we have a sense of self, we are attached to me and my possessions, uh, this operates within the boundaries of virtue. So we need to take good care of our actions of body and speech to be uh, cautious around them. And uh, even though we may uh, differ in the amount of merit that we have, in the amount of kilesas that we have, maybe uh, we have a lot or maybe we have a little, um, we still need to be very cautious around our minds and to take great care, to be restrained. And we do this through um, kanti, through patient endurance. So sometimes we get different feelings appear within our minds. Sometimes there's love, sometimes there's hate, sometimes there's fear. And uh, we try to control this. We do that through, um, firstly, through controlling our body and our speech. But even though we're able to do that, perhaps these feelings will shoot out through our eyes. Maybe we're so angry with someone that if we just look at their face, then that anger will um, come right out. And so we need to restrain even that. And we see just how much suffering that is to have these feelings of aversion there within the heart, to have anger, to have ill will um, that are heating up the heart. That there's all these kilesas operating and then the mind uh, proliferates upon those and it thinks and thinks without end. So we need to train ourselves in this kamatana and bringing up a meditation object. A very suitable object is that of the Brahma Viharas. So there's Metta, Brahma Vihara, Karuna, and Mudita. And so Metta, loving kindness, Karuna, compassion, Mudita, uh, sympathetic joy. And really, this Mudita, it's the benign heart. That we feel pleasure, we feel happiness in the success of others. Whenever we hear for example, that one of our friends have met with success in their lives, and that brings about a brightness for us as well. That uh, when we meet these kinds of friends, um, we just look at their faces and we feel happy within our hearts. We feel very at ease internally that we're able to have friends like this. And so with these people, when they meet with happiness, when they meet with success, with gain, with praise, with... um, an increase in status, then we feel happy with that success as well. And this is mudita jitta. Uh, But sometimes perhaps relatives of ours um, gain these good things in their lives as well. And we may may feel happy, but it's just, it can oftentimes not be the same as for the friends that we have. Um, And maybe that happiness may be a bit fake. So this mudita, it's feeling pleased in the happiness of other people. And just like the people that we love, how we feel joy in their successes and their gains. And we can think in this way and use this as a meditation object that brings about an inner state of happiness, this joy within our hearts, a sense of inner satisfaction, contentment. And it's able to suppress anger and ill will and jealousy. And because this feeling of jealousy, it's like a fire that burns our hearts. And at, uh, or before even the time of the Buddha, um, there was a case of this as well. So uh, a Buddha prior to our Buddha uh, was called Buddha Kasapa. And one of his disciples was a monk who was an abbot. And another monk uh, came to visit his monastery, and uh, this visiting monk was an arahant, and the abbot became very jealous of him. And these feelings of jealousy that he had um, was uh, a lot of uh, papa, of wrongdoing. 
And when he died, um, he had this jealous feeling and that uh, pulled him down into hell. But in his final life, he was born during the time of our Buddha and he attained to arahantship then. Uh, but even so, this small residue of bad kamma uh, from those feelings of jealousy followed him even to this final life. And so we see that these feelings of jealousy, they're able to pull the minds of people down very easily. So we need to be very cautious around them. And especially so nowadays when there's just so much competition in our societies. And, uh, but it wasn't like that before. And before when, say during sports uh, competitions, that someone won, then the other people who were competing against them would uh, feel happiness. They would congratulate that person. And so uh, they saw that the purpose of sports was really for the development of the mind. That even in previous times, people could see that politics was for the development of the mind as well. But nowadays, things are very different. And it's easy for jealousy to arise. And this can really stir things up, make for a lot of chaos. And even monks, it's possible for us to get jealous too. It's not the case that when someone ordains, they're just finished with all their defilements. Because this ordination, it's just a conventional ordination, that that's what happens first. And Lumpur Cha gave a comparison. He said it's like if you take sand, but you call it salt. Well, in a way, it is salt because you've created this new convention but it's salt that's not salty. And so monks need, um, or monks who are, have ordained just conventionally, they need to take a second ordination and they need to practice so they become monks again, that this uh, true monk arises within the heart. So the training for monks is uh, to abandon feelings of attraction and aversion. And we need to really oversee our minds, to watch over them, to train ourselves in samadhi. And train in samadhi right from the very moment when we wake up till the moment we fall asleep. To always be training ourselves in this collectedness, to always have mindfulness with us. Whether we're standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, constantly practicing, constantly chanting, whether we're reciting the words of Buddha, or Dhamma, or Sangha, or going over this chant to be tipi so 108 times, we always try to keep our meditation objects present within our minds. And whether we are working, whether we're cleaning, whether we're going on arms round, we chant as well. And this helps us to keep our mindfulness with us. It's a, one kind of aramana, one kind of sense impression that leads us to peace. That's able to reduce the scattered thoughts that we normally have. But if we don't have that, um, then mindfulness just isn't there. And then we start to think about all kinds of things. The mind goes off to the past, it goes off to the future. And, uh, and then it's easy for a lot of unskillful thoughts to arise. We can get very averse to something, and then we start getting angry, and we start hating something, and then we start getting into ill will and jealousy. And also, if the mind meets with something that it likes, it proliferates in a different direction, and it carries on going without stop. And so both of these paths are the paths of chaos, the paths of confusion, the path of indulgence and sensuality, the path of self-mortification. So we need to train ourselves in um, kamatana as well for the sake of peace of mind, to really put our efforts into that. And when we do this often, then this peace will become very familiar to our hearts and it will be easier to get into the state. At the beginning, however, it can be quite a struggle. And we think a lot. But the more we think, the more we need to meditate. We think a lot, and then we respond to that by chanting a lot. 
And nowadays it's normal for people to proliferate very quickly and because the communication technology that we have is just so fast. So we respond to that by chanting very quickly as well. We need to cultivate our minds in this way so that we're able to get a hold of them, we're able to gain some control of them, over them, so that they're able to come to a state of peace. And really put our efforts into this, really try to train ourselves in this path. So we do it just like this. We bring up these meditation objects of the Brahma Viharas, of Mudita, Jitta, and uh, train ourselves to give our Anamodana as well and uh, be pleased in the success uh, that other people gain. So like if we find out that someone has uh, gained samadhi, then we feel pleased with them as well. If a monk can chant the Padimokha, then we give uh, an emodana to them. If someone starts chanting, um, then we give our anamodana when they start to learn this chant. And then when they succeed in that, when they're able to chant it, um, then that gives rise to mudita jitta, uh, this sympathetic joy. And these two things, this anamodana, are expressing uh, joy in the good deeds of others, and mudita, uh, the sympathetic joy, are slightly different. And so this anamodana, it's, it's that, it's expressing our joy in the merit and the goodness, uh, the good deeds of others. And then when they succeed in that, when they meet with good results, then we have mudita jitta. And this mudita jitta, it's a very skillful state of mind. So we abandon um, evil things, uh, evil through the body, through our speech, in this sila. And then we abandon evil through our minds and uh, try to uh, not follow the defilements in the heart. So these defilements, it's possible for them to make us see the world or look at the world in a very negative light. Uh, but when we're aware that we're doing that, we should put that down and then try to bring our minds to a more positive angle. But it's okay at times to think in a negative way in order to protect ourselves against uh, bad things that may arise. And uh, it's normal to do this, but we should not uh, worry so much about it and try to have mindfulness as we're doing that. And then when we're finished, then we bring our minds back to a more positive light. Because it's normal that there's going to be bad points in everything in this world. And so... Uh, those people who just have 100% goodness in them don't exist. And so sometimes um, we need to look at the good things. We need to, to focus on that goodness. And when we do that, when we look at the good qualities of others, then our minds become good as well. And so we feel happy then when we meet with other people. So we cultivate a mind uh, like this that uh, rejoices in the goodness and the good qualities and the successes of other people. And uh, we see that just how when we meet with success, uh, we don't want for other people to be jealous of us. And so when other people meet with success, then we shouldn't be jealous either. And when we're happy, then we want other people to be happy as well. And, uh, and in doing this, um, in developing mudita in this way, uh, this is also developing merit. So these four Brahma Viharas, uh, the meditation objects that take good care of our minds. And also chanting the recollections of the Buddha, this too protects the heart as well. So we need to train ourselves in these four Brahma Viharas until we're very skilled in them. And uh, it's important for monks especially, to train in metta, in karuna, mudita, upeka, until they become uh, proficient, until these 
qualities are complete within their hearts. We need to train our minds as well in order for them to reach the Dhamma. And so we abandon evil, we train ourselves in skillful states, and we bring our minds to peace. And this peace is genuine merit. And when we meet with this kind of happiness that comes from peace, we realize it has a quality that we've never experienced before. So this training of the mind uh, protects our minds, protects it against the sense impressions that we may experience. And uh, when the minds are in the peaceful collected state, then these sense experiences, they're not able to pierce the heart. And so this peace protects our minds in this way. And just like how our bodies need protection against illnesses, against viruses, so they don't enter into the body. And then they need to develop an immune system as well uh, for any bacteria or viruses that do manage to gain entry. And so our minds too need an immune system, uh, something that can protect them against these mental illnesses. And if we can develop a strong immunity, then the mind won't get sick. And so it's the samadhi that's able to protect the mind. And that samadhi then develops into wisdom. And this wisdom is an all-round thorough knowing of sankharas, of conditioned phenomena. For example, seeing that the body is just a collection of elements, seeing that the mind is just the mind. And at that point, then, it turns empty. And when it's empty, there's no hate, there's no love, there's no fear, there's no jealousy. The mind reaches this pure emptiness, and that is Nibbāna. It arises initially temporarily, so we experience a temporary Nibbāna. But we see clearly that right here, is where true peace exists. And we need to try to get the mind to this state and bring it to a state of purity. And it's this path, this training of abandoning evil, of developing merit, of developing skillfulness that makes the mind pure. And this is uh, the teachings of the Buddha. So for monks, for novices, for nuns, it's especially um, important for us to train ourselves hard, to train ourselves well, really focus, um, because this is our work, this is our occupation. And for lay people, need to train themselves as well. And it's possible for lay people to become monks as well, because the true meaning of a monk is nobility. And... Uh, for those people who can keep the five precepts, um, that these precepts are the qualities of a sotapanna. Also really need to try to train to get the mind into a state of samadhi. We do this by chanting a lot, by making sure that the mind is aware in the present moment. And this brings up an inner sense of satisfaction. And we recollect the Buddha, and then the heart becomes very joyful, very full. Maybe we just say the word Buddha one time, and the mind fills up with joy due to that. If we chant a lot, then this will be raising up the level of our Bharamis. And just like how Anandapindaka, when he just heard the word Buddha, his mind was so rapturous for the whole night that he couldn't get to sleep. And so we train our minds like this, and um, everyone should set your hearts on this practice. <laughs>